Hey everyone, welcome back to Kali Plants. We're back at the greenhouse. It's me again, Mark, and today we have yet another video. And actually, I think that this will be the first of my new video series, which I will be calling Kali Plants Reacts. So I will be trying to react to pictures or videos of succulents online. And hopefully in these videos, I can share my insights when it comes to these succulents, when it comes to these pictures and when it comes to these videos so this is, this will probably be a mishmash of different types of videos but i am hoping that all of them will be informative and for this first one we're gonna be reacting to pictures of sellers here at the philippines of local benguet propagators of succulents i will be showing you images of pictures that i grabbed from other sellers so i hope that no one will copyright strike us in this video or in this series because uh, these are not my photos so these are photos of sellers okay so i think that we're gonna start with this picture of succulent okay so i will be maybe i will be showing an image right here so this is a variegated hawaii and you can see that it's a pretty cheap succulent it's, it costs 300 pesos for this plant which i think that way back when it could have been sold for much more higher prices so this could be more expensive way back then but in this picture you can see that it's only 300 pesos and i think that it's a really cheap price but if you look at the plant you can see that it's a very juvenile it's a very young plant you can see the leaves are also stretched out now i believe that the hawaii um, echeveria is actually a mutated form of echeveria so this is not not the usual shape of leaves that you will find on echeverias because it's actually a mutation so you can see that it's a it's got a very different shape but still i can see here that the plant is still very young and the leaves are maybe a little bit etiolated so if you haven't heard this before succulents will actually have these loose shaped rosettes if they're getting less light so you can see here that the shape of the leaves are actually stretched out and there's only a small hint at our set shape at the middle so that means that the plant is actually etiolating so it's not in a very good shape and i usually wouldn't buy etiolated succulents because they don't look good they don't look good on camera i cannot use them on my videos and also i i find that i care more for succulents which look beautiful when they come when they arrive so if i'm gonna buy this then i might not be able to take care of this very well even with its cheap price so i believe that if i was gonna buy a succulent like this i will probably be looking somewhere else with another seller because it's etiolated it's a very young plant and as i said before young plants or small plants they don't acclimate very well they don't acclimate very quickly compared to our bigger succulents they have more energy to produce roots but you can see here you can see that the hand so the hand is just cradling the plant and you can see that the plant is not as big it's not very big compared to the hand so the picture have been taken very closely to the plant so it looks big but it's not a really big plant if you're gonna bring this to the lowlands then the plant may not be very quick to acclimate here at the lowlands so i would not uh, buy this type of succulent but if you have the money for it and if you have, if you have the patience then prob probably you can buy this succulent okay now we're gonna move on to our next succulent so i have here a picture of a twin head psyche so this is an echeveria agavoidis variety and you can see here that the plant seems like it's big but you can see that the leaf count is very little so it doesn't have a lot of leaves on it so it's a very juvenile plant and you can see that the leaves are already growing very long so that means that the plant is not getting um, enough light or probably it's being overgrown so probably has a lot of fertilizers brought into it so it's being fertilized very heavily so the leaves are growing outwards very long even if they're still young and also it doesn't have that rosette shape that we usually expect from our echeveria so i have here i have here this okay so you can see here this is this is a rosette shaped echeveria you can see that the rosette is round and it's got leaves on all sides so it's evenly shaped so it looks really beautiful if it's shaped like this and you know that if a plant is shaped like this it has a lot of leaves then you can already tell it it's a mature plant but you can see on this one it doesn't have yet that symmetrical look on its rosette so you can see that it's a very immature plant so for this plant so for this price 250 i think it's kind of worth it because the plant is act actually one of the rarer plants around and it's much more expensive if you buy this in a bigger size but still i would not buy this size of succulent 
for 250 pesos i think that it will not be worth it for me personally because i think that this plant will be very difficult to acclimate it will not root up quickly and you know that if your plant has very few leaves on it and if you try to acclimate it then it might lose some of those leaves so it will look uglier before it looks even prettier okay so now let's move on to our next now this is another small type succulent and sadly the price isn't here but i believe that this is this costs about 200 to 300 pesos this is a type of aloe so you can see here this is a castilian a hybrid this is actually one that i wanted to buy because it's really beautiful it's got that nice uh, shape to its leaves it, it really looks like a castilian a hybrid and also it doesn't have a lot of spikes so i actually like this um, smooth type aloes though i also appreciate spikes on aloes but this one this one has a really distinct unique castilian look on it so i believe that it's one that i wanted to buy but uh, somebody else commented mine first before me they commented mine ahead of me so i didn't manage to buy it but for the price 200 to 300 and for the shape that it has i think that the price is reasonable for the type of succulent that it is and also for the size that it has because i would say that when it comes to aloes compared to our echeverias or our sedums aloes can actually acclimate very quickly and they don't drop out a lot of leaves while they are acclimating so compared with our other sensitive sensitive type of succulents aloes how worth yes they don't drop a lot of leaves so those leaves you can see there if you buy that plant the leaves can tend to wrinkle while they are rooting but they will not necessarily drop off the plant actually i have my acclimating um, aloes right here and i will show you i would like to show you an example of that so you can see here this is our aloe rohii hybrid of some type it's really raining right now <laughs> okay and we've got some tricycle outside okay and i keep bumping on this plant okay so you can notice here this uh, leaf at the bottom part of the plant so you can see that leaf that looks like it's wrinkling that looks like it's shriveling and you can see also another leaf here that looks like it's deflated it doesn't have moisture in it so that's what aloe leaves will tend to do it will dry up but it will stay on the plant it will not drop the leaf out of its plant so this one has some spent leaves on there so you can see actually you might find that it's very difficult to remove the spent the dried leaves on aloes because they really stick on the plant for a lot longer so if you want plants that just add more leaves on them that just grow and grow and doesn't drop a lot of leaves then i would recommend aloes so if you find a plant like this on your seller's page so i would recommend that you buy this if you have the money for it and if you really want to invest on aloes and i'm pretty sure that once it grows it will just produce pop someday so i think that it's a really nice investment so for 200 300 pesos it was a really cheap price which is also why i think that when the plant was posted for about two minutes or three minutes when i was scrolling on the seller's page so it was posted for about a minute it wasn't sold yet nobody has selected the plant yet nobody has commented mine on it yet but when i came back like about five minutes after the plant is already sold somebody had already commented mine on it so um, it really <laughs> sold very quickly so if you want if you saw a plant like this being sold for 200 or 300 pesos you better comment mine right away because it will be sold very quickly because this is a really special plant now i have another uh, hybrid here so you can see here you can see this one is also a very uh, spicy looking <laughs> it's looking like it's hot like it's really this red beautiful color of aloe and it's got this really nice uh, spikes on it so i would also like to uh, highlight this uh, the specific trait of this aloe because you can see okay, i will just probably show you a picture um, showing it right here is really really difficult so you can see here that the teeth it has on the sides of its leaves has that um, rectangular shape so that is actually a very coveted feature when it comes to aloe hybrids because that feature that trait cannot be found in the wild so that's only a trait that can be found in al aloe hybrids so that is one selling point of this type of varieties they have that rectangular teeth or some of them even have these teeth that look like brush like they're they look like they're rectangular and then they have like these jagged edges on them so that's how uh, these aloe spikes aloe spikes on rare varieties look like so 
it's a really nice coveted feature when it comes to Allo hybrids. So in when when it was being sold for about 200 or 300 pesos, I think that it was a really nice price. It was a very reasonable, very cheap price for this variety of Allo, even if it's still a juvenile plant because I believe that this plant will really just acclimate very quickly. You should go get one if you manage to find something that's look like this that's something that looks like this and that is priced for about 200 to 300 it's a really nice price for these type of succulents okay so that's another succulent that i didn't manage to buy okay and maybe i will not also be buying a lot of succulents for now because uh, my greenhouse is already full with succulents you can see here i can't move an inch without bumping into a plant so i really have a lot of plants already okay so yeah Okay, so our next seller image is this one. As you can see, this is a set. No, this is not a set. So these are sold individually. So this one, this is a tray of Echeveria setosa. So I believe it is a setosa variety. And you can see that the leaves here are kind of etiolated and some of them are looking very wrinkled. So you can see some of the leaves are already drooping downwards. So that is probably etiolation or probably the plant is not getting enough water. So I would not recommend that you buy this succulent because if you buy this uh, succulent, so if you buy this, for example, this middle one, so if you buy this succulent, the leaves that you will only be able to save when it comes to your care is these, these leaves. So those are the leaves that are most likely to survive and stay on the plant. All those outer leaves that look droopy, they will become dried out if the seller air dries the plant and if they ship it those dried leaves will drop out of the plant and it will not be a very good looking echeveria it will reduce for about 50 percent of its size it will reduce that amount so if you buy this type of succulent which is why i would not recommend that you buy this the seller has a lot of uh, good succulents on their page i actually i think i bought some plants from them once or twice but if this plant will be sold to me will be offered to me i will not be buying this one okay i will try to avoid this one so there are a lot more different sellers of echeveria setosa that looks much more beautiful than this one if you are a beginner if you're not very confident with your acclimating skills then i would recommend you avoid this this type of succulents that are really looking like they're etiolating so if you look at them from afar they look like they're lush they look healthy but if you zoom closer they're not that very good so i would really avoid that there are a lot of other sellers of this type of succulents as well so you can find better quality succulents than this one okay so for our next one i think it's the same seller so for this one you can see that these are still young plants you can see okay so i have here i think i believe this is a Graptoveria Harry Watson. So you can see here, I believe there's a Graptoveria Harry Watson. I had this uh, variety here in my greenhouse. I would like to show you. Okay, let me just grab it. Okay, this is probably about a six month or eight month old leaf propagation of Harry Watson. I think it's older than that. So you can see that it's still a small succulent. The variety of this plant actually has big leaves so it doesn't look like it's a reset shaped succulent because as the plant grows it really grows its long leaves because that's just how the variety grows so it doesn't have a very compact rosette shape so if you look in, uh, if you look at it like that it's not a complete rosette form on that one and this is what i would say a more much more mature variety of harry watson so this actually dropped a lot of leaves recently in my care so you can see that the stem is much more thicker the leaves are much more bigger okay compared with this one the stems are still thin so you can see you can compare the stems so this that means that this one is actually a newly propagated succulent and this one is a more mature one so i would not recommend that you buy newly propagated succulents from sellers online because really they're not very sturdy enough they might grow a lot when they're in the care of the seller they might grow a lot they might grow, produce a lot of leaves because the conditions there in benguet are really nice for succulents they grow very healthily there even if they're young they can probably be passed around in the area and they will not be bothered very much but if you're gonna move them into a hotter climate like here at the lowlands then i would not recommend that because they will not acclimate very well especially if you're one that is not really confident with your potting mix so you can see here it doesn't look very different with the seller's post here you can see so you can see they're newly propagated succulents really so i would avoid 
buying those varieties because there's they're still very young and I have here on the same image I have here an image of a uh, Graptopetalum elen. So you can see here the the stems are very stringy, so they're not very thick. I have here my elen as well, which is actually still very juvenile, very young as well. Okay, and still not acclimating very well because this used to have another head that got rot. So it's really not acclimating very well in my care. So you can see it's still a very young succulent. It's not a very mature one compared with our Graptopetalum mendoza here. You can see that this is a really mature one. So you can see here that the stems are much more thicker already. You can see the stem there. Okay, and the plant has already a lot of lushness on it. And the rosettes are formed very well. So that's what I would also say as a marker of a mature plant. You can see that the rosette is well defined. It doesn't have a loose rosette. The leaves are compact and they look really beautiful. They have that compact shape. So they're also not etiolating. You can see that they're growing in an even pattern. They're not throwing off stems at whatever direction that they can throw them so they're very compact so that's what I would say that's to be expected of uh, compact succulents of healthily growing succulents that get enough light they will not stretch they will not produce these stringy pancit like stems if they're getting enough light so this one this one is not getting enough light. So that's an etiolated succulent. And I would say that when it comes to these stems that you're seeing here at the screen, these stems will get rot very easily and it will drop the leaves out of the stem very easily if you bump into them. So I would really not recommend that you buy this shape of succulent online. I, I really think that they're not supposed to sell this, I think. So if you're a seller and if you're trying to just uh, earn money out of your stock and if your plant really looks like this then please try avoiding as much as possible letting your plants grow like this that's just my advice for you because if people are getting these plants and they're getting them dead or they're not surviving on the hands of their buyers if they're dying already because they're al they're already at a bad shape when they buy it so I think that will discourage a lot of people and it will make um, people buy succulents less often. So I think that it's up to the sellers to provide this good experience when it comes to treating their buyers. So if they're selling this type of succulent, the succulent that looks like this, they're not really providing a very good experience with their buyers because they're starting out with an unhealthy plant at the beginning of their succulent journey. So I think that it's a really sad thing that you can see these plants being posted online. They can actually make this plant grow beautifully they can let it grow for a little while and make the shape much more compact. They can give it some more light and they can make it much more healthier before they sell it. So this plant will not this plant is not necessarily dead on their care. They can make it look even more beautiful, but they chose to sell it at this young age. So I think that it's a really sad thing. So for me personally, I will not avoid I, I will avoid buying that type of succulent. So you can see here. The same goes with this plant. So this is probably another island. You can see that the stem is already too long. That stem will not stay upright when you plant it. When you buy it from the box, when you unbox it and you plant it, that stem will not stay upright. It will just topple over like that. And it, it can get uh, rot on the stem very easily because the stem is not yet corking. So it's a very juvenile stem. So it can get rot very quickly and the leaves can drop off. So you can have a slew of different problems when it comes to buying these really young, really immature succulents. So this looks like a bunch of newly propagated succulents so it looks like they're really rushing their plants i would really avoid buying those now you might uh, notice that all the plants that i recently featured are not good not looking very good but we have some good looking succulents later on so for this one um, this is what they call a sedum aurora blue so i would not say that that is an accurate name sedum aurora is a variegated uh, rubrotinctum and this one is not a rubric tinctum in any way. This is probably a clavatum or probably sedum treliase. So it's probably a sedum treliase. I have my treliase here which is not looking very good. So it suffered a lot. Okay, really sad. It's not their growing season so they're not looking very good. So I would also avoid buying these types. Okay, so you can see here the same is the problem with this plant. 
it's etiolating it has these long stems that are growing everywhere so that means it's looking for light so that means the plant is not in a very healthy shape not in a very good condition so those stems if you buy them from online they can drop a lot of leaves if you unbox them and if you try to plant it those stems will just flop over and they will not look very good and it will take a very long time for the plant to root up and to actually look better in your care if you want to have beautiful looking succulents in your care then i would recommend you avoid these etiolated type ones okay so really sad seeing these plants getting sold online so i believe that as a seller uh, as a buyer i believe that it's your responsibility to choose good looking succulents so if you want to have a good experience with, when it comes to your plants i would recommend you avoid this etiolated young propagations okay now i have here a, a better looking one so you can see here this is an Aeonium kiwi. This is not an Echeveria. Not an Echeveria, not a sedum. This is an Aeonium. They have a lot of interest on their leaves. So you can see that the new growth looks like they're yellowish green in color and the older leaves are pinkish red with some use of green on it. So it's a really interesting, really beautiful type of plant. And also I would say that the seller of this one is actually giving their plants the right amount of light that they need because you can see those stress colors on aeoniums, you can see it there at the middle. So those can, those can only be achieved if the plant is getting enough light. If this plant is grown in a place that has less light, it will stay green all over. So it will not have that variegation. It will not have that variation on the color of its leaves if it's in a shaded area. So this one, this plant is actually getting enough light. So I think that it's in a really good shape, but I would also advise you um, Aeoniums don't actually do very well in the lowlands so in my experience personally I believe some people might have some successes with them but I believe overall they're not that very easy to acclimate and to care for in the lowlands and they also tend to they will also tend to lose that variation that colors on their leaves if they're grown in a lowland situation because what what happens is if they're in a cold area so they will produce these really bright colors if they're in a cold area and they get enough sun but at the lowlands you get a lot of sun but not enough cold temperatures so they will not have that variation on their leaves so if you're living in a much more colder area in a much more colder climate then you might want to try this plant so you might have more successes with this uh, me personally i will not have success with this in my care i don't yet have enough confidence to grow this plant in my area but it's really pretty isn't it so maybe someday i will try growing more aeoniums okay now on our next succulent here it's really raining right now this sedum aurora now this is a true sedum aurora a variegated sedum rubrotinctum i have my rubrotinctum you can see here right there that's not uh, variegated at all so it's green and i i'm not yet managing to make it red actually it's not looking very good right now <laughs> okay so which is why i envy this really beautiful uh, variegated rubrating tom the sedum aurora and you can see it's in a really good shape the leaves are compact it doesn't has a, it doesn't have a lot of stem on it you cannot see a lot of stem so it's growing very compact and you can see there's a lot of new growth so you can know you can tell that the plant is actively growing so it's not dormant but it has that really nice colors because even if it's not stressed because it is a variegated plant it has this pinkish use on it which is really stunning so if you have the right amount of light in your area and if you have the confidence for it i would recommend that you try this plant as well i think this one is co costs about 100 to 200 pesos right now so it's a really nice succulent to have i would recommend this one if you have the space for it and if you have the right amount of light for it but if you're not really yet um, confident when it comes to your acclimating skills i would recommend you avoid variegated plants because variegated plants are much more harder to ca take care of they need a lot of light but they need some protection because they get they can get burned very quickly as well and also they grow slow much more slower than your normal succulents because they have less chlorophyll on their leaves so they will not be able to produce a lot of growth very quickly so you will have to be patient when it comes to these succulents but they're really pretty they're really stunning maybe not yet for me <laughs> maybe they're not yet for me they're not yet 
I will not be able to care for them yet. Okay, so maybe when the temperature changes or when the season changes, I can be able to get my hands on some more of sedums later on. So maybe later on. For this one, this is an Echeveria lilacina. You can see this is a very beautiful succulent. You can see that the farina there is much more complete. The farina doesn't have a lot of marks on it. And the leaf is much more compact. It has a very compact shape. And you can see that the leaves are huddled together. So it has a lot of leaves at the center. You can tell that the plant is growing. So what I would say is if you compare it, I've said it before, if you compare it with this one, it doesn't have that rosette shape. So that means that this one is etiolating and the other one is not etiolating. The Lilacina here, not etiolating. It's not a very young plant and it has enough leaves to acclimate well in your area. So if you manage to lose one or two of those leaves at the bottom, it still has a lot of leaves to replace those lost leaves if you're trying to root this plant. So I believe that this one is an excellent buy. If you're looking for an Akebaria Lilacina, my only concern is this one is priced much more higher compared to our other sellers which sells a lot of succulents. So this seller in particular, they sell about a handful of succulents but they're in really excellent shape and they're priced much more higher. So if you manage to buy or if you manage to find the seller of the succulent, I would re recommend the seller that sells the succulents because they have a lot of beautiful succulents that get enough light. They are the same seller, so for these three succulents, it is the same seller. So if you manage to find the seller of this plant, I would recommend that seller. They have really interesting, really beautiful succulents in their care. Now for the next one, this will not be a very good one. This is an Echeveria uh, Afterglow, so I might want to make this an announcement. So my Echeveria Afterglow, if you've been following the channel last year, that plant already died, so sadly. <laughs> It died probably about winter, around winter time when it was when it was getting rainy in my place. So the plant died. So it actually produced a lot of growth in my care and looked very beautiful. But it got overwatered and it died. So for this one, this is not a very good looking Echeveria afterglow. You can see the leaves are all over the place and they're uh, they're very thin. So you can see they're not wide leaves. They look like they're etiolating, they're stretching, they're looking for light. So it looks like an octopus. So that's what the plant is looking like. It doesn't look like a rose. So it doesn't look very pretty. So I would not recommend you buy that because those leaves, they're very weak. If you manage to plant it up, those leaves will not stay firm. It will just flop over and it will not look very beautiful. But unless if you have a lot of experience when it comes to acclimating succulents, then I can probably say you can buy this one. And if you have plenty of light, so the plant can grow very quickly. But if you're a beginner, I would not recommend you buy this Echeveria Afterglow. It's really in a bad shape. And you can see the leaves are curling up, so it's not getting enough water. So it's probably planted in a very bad potting mix. So I would not recommend you buy this one. Okay. For our next one, okay, this looks to be a better looking succulent so this is an Echeveria benbadis you can see that it's a cluster it has a lot of rosettes on it so it's a cluster of benbadis and i believe that this is a really nice succulent you can see that the rosette is very compact the leaves are closing up so they're trying to protect their central growth so they have that really like rose looking appearance on them which i find is really beautiful so that is a succulent that gets a lot of light. So that is a healthy looking succulent. And you can see that the cluster habit it has, which means it's actively growing. It has a lot of babies on it. So you can probably buy this one and separate it. And you can, and you can get probably about five different echeverias just from this one plant. So if you want to propagate very quickly, I would recommend this one. It's priced at $7.50. So that's only the downside to it because Ben Badis is a pretty uncommon succulent already it's not a very rare one so this is a pretty high price but I believe that it's a really beautiful plant it's really worth it for the price that it has because you're buying more than one plant out of this one okay now I would just also like to note that this one looks like it doesn't have a complete rosette so some succulents will do that if they if they have damage on their apical meristem on their central growth so it might lose that rosette appearance so that part of the plant that head right there will not be growing any new leaves probably it's very likely that it will not be producing leaves on there so that is already a dead head 
and it will only produce rosettes at the sides. So those leaves will die later on and it will not be a viable head to propagate. So if you're buying a plant that is just one this just this one head and it already has a dead central growth, then I would not recommend that. That plant is already dying. So it will die uh, sooner or later. Okay, so I believe that we're getting on our last ones. Okay, so this one I believe is a healthy looking succulent. So Kante is actually a parent plant of the afterglow that I've showed you. I've shown you before. So yeah, that's the afterglow. This is the Kante. So if you manage to find a healthy looking afterglow, it will probably look much more like this rather than looking like this. This is looking like it's a sad afterglow. So this one is a healthy Kante. So you can see if it was violet, then I would say that this was an afterglow, but it's it's white, so it's an Echeveria Kante, and for the price it has, for $8.50, it's really worth it. It's really a, a steal when it comes to this type of succulents because this is actually a very hard-to-propagate type of Echeveria. So I don't think that this one propagates via leaf, so it can only be propagate, propagated via beheading, which makes it much more harder to multiply. So I believe for the price it has and for the size it has, it's a steal for the price that it has. So I would really recommend that if you have the money for it, I would recommend this one. And you can see the leaves are really flawless. It doesn't have a lot of markings on its farina. So I find that really nice buying these flawless succulents. Because if you're already buying a plant that has damaged farina, and when you manage to unbox it, it will still lose a lot of those farina. So it will look even uglier than that. So this one, you cannot expect this to stay flawless when it comes to you if you ship it in a box so it will not stay flawless but at least it has a lot of arena to begin with so i would really recommend you try this one out it really has that really nice rosette shape at the middle so those leaves actually has a higher chance of keeping their farina these ones these outer ones they can probably lose their farina but you can expect new growth at the middle so yeah i would recommend that one for our next one and this looks to be kind of a confusing plant so this looks like it's a healthy plant you can see it looks like it's healthy it looks like it's compact but this is you have to note this is a clavatum so clavatums are not that very good when it comes to acclimating i have my clav clavatum here and it's not yet looking oh it's, an, it's behind me okay so I, this is an update on my clavatum it's still wet okay okay so you can see here it has already produced some growth but it took a long time for it to have that appearance and it's not yet even growing a lot but i believe that if i manage to acclimate this it will just spurt growth very quickly so i think that because it's a small succulent it can produce a lot of leaves very quickly if i manage to root it well and if the rooting process doesn't have problems but for this one okay if you're buying this one 350 that's already a high price okay if you're buying this one you can still expect to have leaf loss on it so these leaves most of it will not come to you healthily so especially if the seller is still new and is not yet very good when it comes to air drying their plants so this one can lose a lot of leaves when it reaches you but I believe for the size that it has it's kind of worth it for the price it has also because it's already in a very big size it already has a lot of rosettes on it so you just have to be very patient with that but i can also say that it's a pretty mature plant because it already has that corking so it's not a very juvenile plant so you can probably have some have some successes on it so it can probably uh, stay beautiful in your care so if I had the money for it, I would probably look for something that has a lot more leaves, but probably at around the same size as this one, as the clavatum that you're seeing here. Okay, so I think that's about all the succulent pictures that we're going to be reacting for today. So I hope that this really helped you in trying to choose your new succulents when you're buying your succulents someday after all this rainy season is over so i really hope that the advice that i gave you will give you some insight on how to buy better plants later on now if you want to see me to react on other pictures on other videos as well 
and probably I can also react to pictures of my viewers so if you have plants that you want me to react to or if you want me to react on your greenhouse or on your garden you can try sending me a picture on my Facebook page on messenger I will probably make a video of that soon so if you really like to interact with me and actually a lot of my viewers are asking me questions on Facebook so if you want me to do that to do that to answer your questions in a video format you can message me on my Facebook page on my Facebook account Mark Maravillo you can look me up on Facebook so I think that's about it for our action video I've been ranting on for too long this is already a very long video I really hope that you like this one and I really hope that you subscribe to this channel and I think that's about it I will see you on the next one bye bye